Stable diffusion is a lot of fun, but it also generates a lot of images. Do you want to be able to search through your images quickly to find that weird dog you generated three months ago? I'll show you how to install your own diffusion toolkit today on Building Dreams. This episode of Building Dreams is brought to you by the new Everly Heights Patreon. Get access to the custom stable diffusion models we're using to build Everly Heights by supporting us at patreon.com slash Everly Heights. And by StreamYard. Use it like I am to bring your streams to life. Get $10 in free credit by going to streamyard.everlyheights.tv to sign up. Hey, it's Bill Meeks here for Building Dreams, where I help you use the latest AI technology to build dreams of your own, just like I'm using them to build the first cartoon set in my Everly Heights universe, a sitcom called Very Special. Today, I'm going to go over a great new tool I found to navigate my collection of tens of thousands of images I've generated in Stable Diffusion since I started playing with it a year ago this month. Happy anniversary, me! We've come a long way, baby. Now specifically, I've been mixing my character and set generator Laura's that I've trained for Everly Heights to generate a ton of fun picks like these for a combined model that I'm working on so I can do comics and stuff. But I'm finding it hard to sort through them, as well as the assets I'm generating for very special, when I need to find something quick, a reference, or something to drop into PNG info. Now I've been looking for a tool to browse my prior images, search through the PNG info attached to each file, or even rate various generations as I'm building assets for my cartoon and evaluating my custom models. Luckily, I found a great solution online this weekend called Diffusion Toolkit, which you can find over on GitHub. First up, installation. Okay, let's install this puppy and put it to the test. First, visit the Diffusion Toolkit GitHub and download the assets path. You do that by coming to the page here, scrolling down, and then click download on Windows. Then come down here to assets and download this Diffusion Toolkit v1.3.zip. And we'll save that out. Now you'll also need to have the .NET 6 desktop runtime installed. You can get that at the Microsoft link right down there. All right, now to install this, it's pretty easy. You've already downloaded the zip file here. Just open that up in your favorite uh, zip file handler of choice, I use 7-zip. Grab all the files, then create a folder for it on your hard drive. I'll go ahead and save it in here in my uh, Stable Diffusion folder, and just drag and drop all of the files in there and let them extract, it'll take a second. And there we go, it's installed and ready to run. So just come in here and click on the exe file, the Diffusion Toolkit.exe, and then this info window will show up here. If you don't want to have this show up every time you load up the software, just go ahead and check don't show on startup. But I'm going to go ahead and keep it there just because. And then close it. And then in a minute, a window will pop up, which will allow you to configure everything. First off, we're going to want to add where Stable Diffusion saves our images. I'm going to copy that for later. So we'll go into our Stable Diffusion Renders folder. And we'll go ahead and just click Select Folder. Excluded folders, I'm not going to worry about, but in theory, if you wanted to, you could put in your text to image grid, stuff like that, into excluded folders. So go ahead over to the Checkpoints tab, and then we're going to need to find our model root folder. Um, it says here, you know, it'll be in the model slash stable diffusion folder, so we'll just go ahead and browse over to here to our Stable Diffusion Web UI folder, then go to Models, then Stable Diffusion, and all our Stable Diffusion models will be in here. And if you want to be able to search by things like your model name, you're going to want to point it to your uh, cache.json file in your Stable Diffusion install too, which you can find right in your Stable Diffusion Web UI folder. So go ahead and click that. And that'll just allow it to search the hash of the model against your image so you can pull up, you know, everything for the Rev animated model, for example. Now, as far as images, thumbnails per page, we can keep it at 100 or we can take it up to as much as 500. We'll keep go ahead and keep ours 100. 
NSFW, uh, you can go ahead and put some tags in here. So if you have NSFW images in your render folder, you can sort of select those out and deal with them or not. Me personally, I don't really generate too many NSFW uh, images, but no shade to anyone out there who does. Themes, you don't need to worry about. That's just the window colors. And then database, after it builds the database of your images, this is where it'll store it and so you can back up and restore it too. So now that we have all the settings here, we'll go ahead and just close this window. Go ahead and let it scan for images when it launches. It took about five minutes for it to scan my 24,000 or so images that I've made in Stable Diffusion over the past year. And those are just the ones I haven't deleted. And then after a few minutes of scanning, you'll have all your images load it up in the database. Now it launched here with the preview image for me at full size, so you can't see the whole thing unless you scroll. But if you want, you can go ahead and click on the image preview over on the right here and then do control minus or control plus to zoom in and out. Now let's go through some basics of the program. Okay, now since I'm a big Superman fan, I've made a lot of uh, Superman images. So we'll go ahead and start out with Superman and just type Superman into the search here and click search. And look at that. There's all my Superman images I've made over the years, um, over the year, rather. Um, here, I'll find a fun one for you. Look, it's Superman sitting in a bar drinking a beer. I did. Uh, there was a weird version of that one, too. Now, when you click on an image, it opens up in this big preview pane over on the right. From here, you have a few options to do with the image. If you click on this paper icon, it'll copy all the image parameters to your clipboard. Uh, basically, it uses all the info you would pull up in PNG info and throws it into your clipboard so you can paste it wherever you want. Show an Explorer uh, does exactly what it says on the tin. You just click that and it'll open up where the image is on your hard drive in your Stable Diffusion render folder, which if it's anything like mine, is filled to the brim. And then last but not least, if you just want to see, you know, what the prompt in your settings were, you can just click on this I here and it'll bring up all of the generation uh, parameters for the, your particular image. The, uh, the positive prompt up here, negative prompt, then steps, sampler, uh, seed, etc., etc., etc. Now you'll see here we have a lot of Superman images. You know, he's, he's a, a very common sort of a test subject for me. So much so that we have pages of them. So you can come down here to spin through the different pages of Superman pictures in my example that you've done. There's another one of me uh, as Superman, or at least I was trying. I don't know how successful that guy was. Now, it's great that you can view the images here, but we can also sort of organize them too while leaving them where they are on your hard drive. So if we want to, we have a bunch of Superman images here. What if we just selected all these? Right click and then add to new album. And then we'll just type in Superman for the album name. And there, now um, let me go ahead and clear out my search here. And we're back to my main folder. And if I want to just look at all my Superman images, just click on my Superman album. And look, there we go. Six images of Superman, one of them looking pretty darn weird. <laughs> this is a really great way to organize things without having to move the files around. Okay, so I've been playing around with this program for a few and I wanted to give some first impressions. First of all, the search is lightning fast. I needed a quick way to access images I remember making and this works great. Now, when you install and open the program, the thumbnails are really small by default, but if you want to make them bigger, you can just go to View, then Thumbnails, and then change it to 384 by 384 or 512 by 512. Actually, uh, 384 is probably a little better. Uh, maybe even smaller. Yeah, actually, I'm really fond of uh, 256 by 256. Also, I just want to say, you know, clicking through these and launching the graphic in the preview pane works a lot quicker and is a lot less cluttered than, you know, going through Explorer with these tiny little thumbnails, then double clicking and launching the Windows Photo Viewer. So much improved workflow. I really love it. 
Now let's get into some advanced features of the program, the things I'm going to be using to evaluate my artwork before I animate. First, we'll talk about rating images. Now, I love making creative decisions with hard data, which means I like rating images to pick which ones I'll pour hours into to take them from good to great. Like I did in this video. Try and have a metric to rate the image by in mind already. This might be something as simple as, you know, quality. How high quality do you think this image is? For my workflow, I'm going to rate them by how much work they'll need in Photoshop to bring them up to a production-ready asset. Now, if I go in here into the search and I type in the keywords for my Everly Heights Laura's Everly Heights Set Generator XL and Everly Heights Characters XL, I'll get all the images I rendered using my custom Laura, as you can see here. Now I just have to go down the row and rate each of them on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the most ready to go. And when I'm done, I can sort my images using this menu up top here and sort by rating. And it'll give me, you know, what's going to be, you know, hundreds of images, but it'll give me the top, you know, 50 or 100 or however many I'm going to use to train my model. So it'll be really easy to grab those and move them over to the training folder and uh, let Koya SS do its thing. So when I get done rating all these images, I can come in here and sort by the top models and grab the top, you know, 100 to 300 images pull them over into a new folder and use them to train my new Everly Heights uh, comic books or combined model. I'm not sure what I'm going to call it yet. <laughs> One feature I really love is that you can drag and drop images from Diffusion Toolkit into your stable Diffusion software, just like you do from Explore. Quick and easy, and it, then it loads up all the settings for you. With Diffusion Toolkit, you can also take advantage of aesthetic scoring. If you already use the Aesthetic Image Scorer plugin for Auto 1111, you can also sort the images by Aesthetic Score. Sadly, I don't run that plugin yet. I'm going to install it now, though, so in the future, I'll be able to take advantage of this feature. Sadly, for the Everly Heights combined model I'm working on, I'm not going to be able to really take advantage of it because it involves re-rendering out the images again, and I don't really feel like doing that. Another cool feature in Diffusion Toolkit is the Prompts view. You just click the little document icon right here, and then it'll show you all of the prompts that you've put in here. And you can, you know, you can search through the prompts. Like we'll try my Superman again. There's a bunch of Superman stuff, and uh, you know it divides the prompts into prompts and negative prompts. So if you have a negative prompt you use all the time, and you want to search for that, like for example, if you want to see what sort of negative prompts you've used to deal with the hands. Just go ahead and type hands and uh, then hit enter and it'll search it. And then you just click the image icon up here to go back to your main screen. Sometimes switching back and forth between these locks up the program and you have to restart. So in conclusion, I think Diffusion Toolkit is great. The installation was easy breezy, no git pull command line nonsense needed. Now, as I mentioned before, I wish I'd installed the Aesthetic Score plugin for Auto 1111 so I could take advantage of that data without running all my images through it again and having to make multiple copies of the images. I, I'm installing it now, though, so I can use it in the future. I love that the Diffusion Toolkit lets you make the images so big. I can't tell you how many hours I've wasted going into Explorer, double-clicking an image, letting it look Windows Preview, closing that one, forgetting to close that one. Uh, going through 20 images, realizing I have 20 image previews for Windows open. This is so much simpler, so much easier. And then, you know, I don't even have to open up Stable Diffusion. The prompts right there for me. And being able to rate images after I generate them is going to help me a lot when selecting the pristine data set to train my new model. on. It's going to take a lot of the busy work out of it. A lot of the, you know, moving things to different folders and having multiple copies laying all over my hard drive. I go in, I rate the images, I grab the ones from the top of the heap, and then I move those over to work with them. Easy breezy. So that's how you can use Diffusion Toolkit to search, rate, and organize your stable Diffusion render folder.
If you like the images from my upcoming model that you've seen here today, go ahead and hit subscribe and stay tuned. I'll be sharing the new combined model I'm working on with my patron supporters after I get through rating a couple thousand images to train the model. It's going to be a sec. But for now, you can get my character model generator, my set generator, and my prop generator all over on that Patreon at patreon.com slash Everly Heights. Well, thanks for joining me today. And I can't wait to share more about Everly Heights and how I'm using the latest AI technology to bring my creative dreams to life. See you next time. Read the stories and join the team at everlyheights.tv. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Everly Heights. Watch us build Everly Heights in building dreams by subscribing to at Bill Meeks LA on YouTube. Get access to the custom stable diffusion models we're using to build Everly Heights, as well as our morning meeting production diary by supporting us at patreon.com slash Everly Heights. And then in a minute, a window will pop up, which will allow you to configure everything. Unless you've managed to f*** up the install. But um bum bum Poppy. Kurt Cobain playing an accordion. Demon on our hillside. Romeo. Romeo. Wherefore art thou, Romeo? Tis better tis nobler in the mind and stand next to the moon. Hey, it's me, Mario!